Welcome back to Instagram vs Reality, the segment on the channel where we take a deep dive into badly done photoshops, how it's achieved and why they get called out. As a quick disclaimer, these videos are simply meant to be informative and are not targeted at anyone to slander their brand. The photos this week are from r slash Instagram reality and a few of them are user submitted to our Instagram account. Chances are you've clicked this video because of the Madison beer thumbnail and I'll get to that in a bit. In the previous video I defended Madison as not having photoshopped her image here citing forensic tools and photoshop experience. In today's video I'm going to show you exactly why Madison beer did photoshop this image and what the telltale signs are. But before that, let's go through some easier photoshop examples so that my analysis later on will make more sense. First up we have a case of body morphing and the backstory being that it's for a dress shop. I find it really hard to imagine that the editor didn't notice the mirror reflection but nonetheless the biggest giveaway here are the crooked outlines of the mirror's frame and virtually everything inside the mirror looks like it's going through a microwave. Granted that she is standing three quarter turned and her side profile might actually look like that without editing, especially when you look at how lean her face is and her back is hidden by her arm in the reflection so we can't truly confirm what she does look like. Her arm proportion is still wildly off because the waist is just too sucked in. My best guess here is that the editor sucked in the waist and the small of her back marginally for a more snatched hourglass look and then try to cover up the bending wall with a patch tool because it's only a small bit of frame here to fix. Fixing this frame wouldn't be that much harder but it would take a lot more time especially as it's been done so incorrectly and very likely not by a professional. Perhaps the owners actually edited the photos themselves without the model's consent to save a few dollars. Most models don't appreciate completely remodeling their body in post-production for obvious reasons, but it also looks bad on them if they get called out because they're the face of the work. In this photo there are bending light switches, the mirror frame contours to her body, everything in the mirror is crooked and plenty of image artifacts that are left behind which were not corrected. When you use the liquify tool in Photoshop or Facetune to distort any type of pixel, some of the image resolution and clarity is lost in those areas, which can then be detected with error analysis algorithms commonly used in forensic analysis. Moving on, we have a James Charles submission. I respect James for being one of the realist and honestly most responsible influences in the scene time and time again. He's always been open about his facetune and editing usage, but I wanted to use this photo as an opportunity to highlight the advantages of Photoshop over facetune and similar mobile app. Both softwares have the ability to move pixels around like a thick soup, but Photoshop allows for a level of detail and control that you just can't get from your two thumbs on a 6 inch screen in facetune. To correct the background distorting with James increasing his cheekbone projection, you need to essentially redraw the missing details. Straight, simple lines like these are usually the easiest to fix in Photoshop and so I took a quick crack at correcting the background by using the brush tool free handed with a decent amount of feathering to match the low resolution of the image. This process actually took a while in trying to match all the subtleties in colour of the wall background and is why good editing work takes time and isn't cheap. The end product is still a bit rough and would need maybe another 30 minutes of correction but it's to show that it can be done and as long as it's not noticeable there'd be no reason for you to zoom in and detect a random line on a wall. Before we go to the next image I want to quickly talk about Chinese leg lengthening apps and beauty standards. In the last few episodes we've come across numerous cases where women have lengthened their legs in real time to get freakishly long proportions. While this is a relatively uncommon type of edit in the west, there are plenty of apps on the Chinese marketplace that can do it very easily and accurately. Here is an example with her normal proportions on the right and common sense should tell you that no woman is two thirds legs, especially when you look at her arms. 
A viewer sent us this TikTok to our Instagram page at Kuz Studio and it shows how the effect is achieved by lengthening the perspective of the lower half of the video. Although we've talked about the effect itself a lot, I'm very surprised by the quality of the filter. Obviously, as she's exaggerating her movements, there are wooden half panels forming that give away where the perspective is being lengthened from. But for a still image, it's a powerful algorithm, although very unrealistic proportion-wise. Tangent aside, let's look at a skin retouching example. This is a modeling shoot, and I don't have a lot of backstory on this. It could be an amateur editor practicing the skills, or it could be a professional who got paid to do this job, in which case it's worth calling out the flaws. The most obvious case are the eyes, which are really poorly done for a number of reasons. Apart from having virtually no capillaries visible, the eyes are also unnaturally white. For comparison, we'll be using what I think is an example of good retouching. This photo has been altered too, but only minor surface level changes such as saturation and hue, with a few blemishes being removed. Notice how his eyes are a darker shade of grey, even in strong lighting. Plus, there's some hints of redness for his eyeball capillaries. It's one of the reasons why retouches, or good retouches at least, don't unnaturally widen the teeth like with veneers, because it makes the eyes look even more dull in comparison. The next issue that I have with this edit is the skin texture. It's good that the editor remembered to add the skin texture back in, but he or she has clearly overdone it to the point that the skin looks leathery. A texture retouch like this would likely be done with frequency separation, where the bumps of the skin and the color of the skin are edited separately rather than as one entity. The issue is, unnaturally adding texture back in is very difficult to get right because there are very subtle nuances to our skin that requires artist-like precision, otherwise it will just look uncanny. Let's go back to our good example. Notice how the skin here, especially at the under eye, contours around the entire periocular region. The pores and bumps of the skin aren't randomized, but follow patterns and contour lines all across the different elevations and depressions of the face. Here, the editor has left the under eye skin untouched as it contours around the eye, which is good because that would be a dead giveaway, but has become complacent with the rest of the face. While the skin appears tough and leathery here, it's baby smooth at the cheeks, jaw, and these random spots by the hair. It can't be a coincidence that the editor didn't want to go too close to the hair and just left those parts untouched with his texture brush. There are also some blur spots here and here, which make no sense as the entire face is in focus and should be texturized in the same way. Compare that again to the good example, and this texture, uneven skin tone, blemishes, dark spots, creases and wrinkles all throughout. Things that make the real image look more believable. Alright, let's look at what Madison's up to this week. In the last video I defended her because there wasn't enough proof to convict her of having edited this particular photo, but this week there are too many signs that point to a bad photoshop edit. Firstly, the glass panels that started off separately have somehow fused together coincidentally near her butt. What's worse still is that she posted this after so we can clearly see that it's not some avant-garde architectural design but her just using content aware fill to remove something. She herself has claimed that there was bird matter on the glass which was removed, which I'd agree with. Fusing these panes together won't make your butt look bigger, but for someone with so much controversy surrounding them, wouldn't you just want to take the picture 10 centimeters to the left and avoid the needless call out? Then in the reflection, you can also see an outline. Now, I can't tell if something is fishy here or not, it could just be the natural reflection and camera angle, but considering the sun is overhead and she's so close to the glass, the reflection of, I presume, the small of her back, given that it's the same white as her jeans, should be smothered by her body because she's virtually touching the glass. 
I'm going to say that she did slim her back, and that is the old outline of her actual body calling her out. I say this because she did edit her butt to be bigger, as the glass pane begins to curve outward right here, so it's more than likely that she's corrected her waist as well, which would actually help to explain why the panels are fused together, as the opening of the panes themselves probably became crooked with the liquify tool and virtually impossible to straighten. So in a panicked attempt, perhaps they just fused it together and said, maybe no one will notice. I'd personally just remove this entire reflection issue in post-processing because A, it can cause miscommunication when people are already hypersensitive about Madison editing her photos and B, no one is going to call her out if this reflection wasn't there because they'd just assume that her body was touching the glass and you can't prove otherwise from this camera angle. So that's exactly what I did in Photoshop. Using the clone stamp tool, the reflection was replaced by the transparency of the glass, the ocean behind it, and whatever object this is behind the cameraman. Again, you don't know what's behind the cameraman, so there's no way to prove that there isn't a sign saying AV behind them. After the reflection is cleaned up with a fine brush, the glass panel still needs to be corrected. Considering there's a good view of the panel in this image, I cut that out and just left the opening between the two panels to get a natural looking blue ocean. The edges of the donor panel were cut out because the blue here is very different to the dustier look of the glass panel here. At this point, the work is passable and no one would bother to look here, but some minor attention to detail would be lining up the waves of the ocean so that they bridge the panel as one continuous wave, whereas here they're all over the place. And also, since the panels are dirty, the inside should have a thin line of brownish bluish dust on the inside of the openings, because this donor panel is in a very different angle and we can't see what's inside of it, whereas here, we can. If you don't understand any of this, and I don't blame you, I didn't do the best job in explaining an otherwise relatively difficult edit, just take my word for it being doable. Virtually every Photoshop edit and the telltale signs can actually be corrected with enough time, effort, money and skill. You don't ever catch the good edits, and while my corrections of her mistakes were very quick and rudimentary, there would be no reason for you to look twice at a random glass panel unless there was something obvious to indicate further analysis in the first place. Maybe like a fused glass panel. So really, she did this to herself this time. So that brings this episode to a close. With every episode of this series, we get loads of comments asking if our Photoshop services are open to the public and, well, we've decided to phase some of them in slowly. Normally we do commercial work for modeling agencies and movies on a quote basis, but right now we're opening up some of our skin retouching services to everyone over at Coves.com. And we're also working on a series of articles to explain some of the common Photoshop flaws and how to avoid them. Follow our Instagram and Twitter to stay up to date on that. Music